We are coming for you. In the late 90s, I was working in a small office park about 30 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. It was located near a small, affluent town that was your typical metropolitan suburb. It was here that I witnessed a very disturbing event. It was early spring, the weather was beginning to warm, and I decided to take my lunch break at a local cafe. The little cafe was about a five minute walk from my office. Being that the weather was nice and the temperature was in the 70s, I decided to eat outside in the seating section. The cafe was located at a busy intersection and the hustle and bustle of people walking by and the constant flow of traffic was great for people watching or just a background drone as I read the paper. As I turned to the metro section of the Washington Post, I heard a familiar sound. It was the screeching brakes of a city bus. It was pulling up to its routine bus stop across the street. As people filed off the bus and started walking in different directions, I heard a commotion. Let go! Give it back to me! I pulled my head out of the paper and looked across the street. Even though the bus was blocking my view, I could still see the people who just exited. And even most of them were turning around to see the ruckus. Stop it! I heard a woman's voice shouting obscenities and sounding very angry. Fuck off! Leave me the fuck alone! I hate you! Just as the bus was loading again, I saw the angry woman walk from behind the bus, still shouting at someone on the sidewalk. You fucking, ugh, stop it! She was a young woman, probably in her 20s, with shoulder-length brown hair. She was somewhat attractive, although her face was in a grimace as she continued to rant at someone. Fuck you! She continued to walk away from the bus, backwards into the busy street. At that point, I noticed she was barefoot. The woman was wearing blue jeans and a white t-shirt. She was also pulling a small suitcase on wheels with a handle. It looked like whoever she was arguing with really wanted that suitcase. It was like she was in a tug of war with whoever she was shouting at. Now at this point, I couldn't see the other person as they were still behind the bus, although I could tell they too were in a violent struggle over the suitcase. Several other people around me that were eating had noticed what was going on and everyone was looking. While a small crowd had gathered at the bus stop watching, I wondered why no one had intervened. She was obviously in a heated fight and whoever was pulling her suitcase was much stronger because she kept getting yanked violently back towards the bus. Hey, excuse me, sir, do you know that woman over there? Who, oh, me? Do I know her? No, I don't think so. But I know a lot of other crazy idiots out here. But shouldn't we help her or something? Help her? You? Me? What the fuck are we gonna do? She's a fucking loony. Oh, okay. Hey, let me give you some advice, tough guy. Let the crazy people be crazy people. No, but that doesn't seem right. Shouldn't we just- Kid, I'm telling you, forget about it. Go back to reading your paper. Are you serious? That seems kind of- Hey, kid, let me ask you a question. You believe in God? Yeah, I guess so. All right, good, me too. So she's his problem now, all right? Then the bus pulled away, giving me a full view of the scene. On the sidewalk, the crowd was watching in confusion. It took me a while to realize what was happening. At first I was a bit amused, then quickly realized that this wasn't funny. The young woman was in a knockdown drag-out fight with, wait for it, no one. Now I have seen my fair share of homeless people that had some sort of mental problem where they talked to someone who wasn't there or walked in circles or other such behaviors, but this was different. This was a full on mental breakdown or some sort of drug hallucination because this girl was in such a struggle you actually would have believed she was fighting with someone over that suitcase. I mean, she was fully immersed in this struggle like a mime would pretend to be trapped in a box or pull a rope. At this point, she was halfway across the street. Cars had stopped and other people had even exited surrounding restaurants to witness the strange spectacle. Then all of the sudden she flew backwards like she'd been violently shoved. The suitcase fell to the ground as she fell hard on her back. Without a pause, she leapt up, grabbed the suitcase and started swinging it wildly at her phantom assailant. This continued all the way to the other side of the street on the sidewalk where I was seated. She continued to flail her arms and kick at her tormentor, all the time shouting for it to leave her alone and stop following her. Sirens in the distance told me that someone had wisely called the police. As she continued up the sidewalk, some good Samaritan approached her. Excuse me, miss. Fuck off! I don't want to bother you while you're doing your thing over here, but can I call somebody for you? Leave me the fuck alone! I feel really bad watching you suffer. I mean, I've been through my fair share. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck, no! Get the fuck back! 
You fucking loony bitch. I hate you. Fuck off. Fuck you. Hey, way to go, tough guy. Ah! It's like I was just saying to the kid here. Let the crazy people be crazy people. <laughs> hey, piss off, Tony. Haven't you got some breadsticks you could be making? <laughs> Besides, what'd you ever do to help? Hey, fuck you, tough guy. <laughs> hey, I got a breadstick for your mother. <laughs> no, fuck you, you fat piece of shit. Hey, tell your mother to call me, you fucking schoolboy. Hey, who you calling a schoolboy? I'll teach you a thing or two, you half-breed, oversized cum stain. Hey, fuck you, you greasy waste of an orgasm. Yeah, go fuck yourself, you jerk. Hey, fuck you. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. No, fuck you, you wise guy. Fuck you. You're a discredit to your father's name. Hey, no, fuck you and your father. No, well, fuck your mother. No, fuck your mother. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. Fuck you. Hey, don't talk to me like that, you fucking age. piece of shit. Fucking no, you fucking make your breadsticks, you pizza-eating motherfucker. Don't talk to me. No, fuck you. Fuck you. You still on for poker? Tomorrow night? Yeah, down at Uncle Romy's house, 7 o'clock. Yeah, no sweat, Tony. I'll see you then. All right, see you later. Shortly after that, police and paramedics arrived. They tried to talk her down, but she was fully submerged in whatever nightmarish delusion she was suffering from. The ambulance was parked right next to the cafe. They eventually strapped her to a gurney and wheeled her on to the waiting ambulance. She was wheeled right past me, and I was only a couple of feet away, so I got a really good look at her. Her eyes were wild, darting all over as she continued yelling and screaming. Ma'am, you have to calm down. We're trying to help okay, you. Ma'am, we're, taking you there. we're trying to get you help. Hold her arm. She's about to break the restraint. I noticed healed scars on both her wrists. She obviously had mental health issues. Schizophrenia, possibly. I didn't know. But her breakdown was severe, and it was sad and maybe even a bit frightening to see a person so mentally ill. By this point, I'd completely lost my appetite, and I returned to work just a little shaken. I recounted the incident to my wife that evening, and we discussed possible explanations. I don't know, it was just the way that she flew back when the suitcase flew out of her hands. There was something unnatural about it. Really? I don't know, babe. Are you sure she wasn't just drunk or on drugs or something? No, I swear there was more to it than that. It was like she was fighting with something that I couldn't see or... Or what? What do you think it was? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Babe, you're not crazy. I don't know. I'm not so sure. Stop. Don't tickle me. Come here. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> For a while after that, I didn't hear anything else about the woman. But the story wasn't over. Fast forward several years later, the summer of 2004. I was still working for the same company in the same office park. Very close to my office is a beautiful little wooded park. It has several baseball fields and a couple miles of jogging and hiking trails. During nice weather, I would frequently have lunch there and walk some of the trails with my coworkers. My commute home from work is about a 30 minute drive, but when traffic is bad, it can take as much as an hour and a half. For this reason, during nice weather, I oftentimes bring workout clothes and go for a jog in the park after work. When I'd finish work, I'd just check the traffic report and if there was a backup, I would head straight to the park for an hour jog. Over time, I became very familiar with the regulars. I would occasionally jog with a friend or coworker, but most often I would go at it alone. I would see a lot of the same joggers, softball leagues, and even park regulars. Among the regulars, were a couple of homeless people that would congregate near bathrooms and pavilions around the picnic tables. There were about four or five of them. Although very rough looking, they were friendly enough and people would often bring them food or clothing. Even though it was against the rules, they would often spend the night in the park and for whatever reason, the park rangers wouldn't chase them off. It was kind of their turf and you would rarely see an unfamiliar homeless person in that park. And it was for that reason, I was a little surprised to see a new face one evening. It was early summer and the sun was setting late. I had just completed the main jogging loop solo and was cooling down, walking a quick lap around a small trail. The main jogging loop circled the park and was mostly wooded. The interior of the park had several shorter hiking trails. It was at the intersection to one of these trails that I saw something strange. A skinny old woman sitting in a small meadow. As I got closer, I noticed her disheveled appearance. She wore a long black dress, tattered and torn. She was barefoot and her knees were pulled right up to her chest as she rocked slowly back and forth, staring straight ahead. As I passed her by, her appearance became more alarming. She was absolutely skeletal, 
Even with her dress on, you could tell she was nothing more than skin and bones. Her face was completely sunken in, with large dark circles below her eyes, and her hair was a gray, tangled nest that draped down her back. For whatever reason, when I was a kid, I was terrified of witches. And that's exactly what she looked like, a stereotypical movie witch. It gave me an extremely creepy vibe, but I managed to say, good evening, as I passed by her. She said nothing, she just continued to rock slowly. When I was a couple minutes past her, it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was that same girl who had a breakdown at the bus. I was 100% sure that was her. Five years earlier, I had described her to my wife as a young woman in her 20s. She looked as if she'd aged 25 years. It was like her illness or addiction had completely and totally ravaged her. She was a shell of a human, trapped in her own head or whatever her deal was. An immense sadness covered me as I drove home that evening. Over the next year, I saw her in the park maybe a half a dozen times. The homeless regulars in the park left her alone. I guess they figured out that she was no threat to their setup. When I saw her, she would always be sitting in the same two or three spots, slowly rocking on her haunches and occasionally muttering to herself softly. Please, leave me alone. But the last time I saw her is when things really got weird. It was almost a year to the day from the first time I'd seen her in the park. And it was almost an identical evening, early summer. I was finishing up my run a little late. It was close to 8 p.m. and the sun was setting behind the trees. As I walked on the path to the parking lot, I noticed her. But she wasn't in a regular spot of hers. She was sitting on a bench about 15 feet off the trail under a huge old elm tree. She wasn't rocking as usual, but instead she was sitting up, back resting on the bench. She was still staring straight ahead and muttering audibly, almost pleading, Please, leave me alone. I was taken back. Is she talking to me? I thought. I stopped fairly close to her, but she wasn't looking at me, so I continued past her. I heard her let out a sigh and whimper. I looked over my shoulder and what I saw made my blood run cold. All the hair on my neck stood up. Goosebumps covered my arms and a chill ran up my back. Slowly, from behind the large elm tree, a dark shadow figure emerged. It slithered up behind the bench and stood up right behind her. Oh, my rational mind tried to take the reins from my terrified imagination. It's just the shadow from the trees. Yeah, the sun setting, casting long shadows, that has to be it. I turned around fully to try and process what I was seeing. Sure enough, a large dark figure stood right behind her. It was much darker than the surrounding shadows and had no facial features. A feeling of complete evil electrified the air around this terrifying shadow thing. I was frozen. To my absolute horror, the woman looked up at me and we locked eyes. Her eyes opened wide and a glimmer of understanding came across her face. She knew I saw it. The terror on my face was as clear as a bell. Her mouth opened slightly like she wanted to say something to me. In fact, she was about to get up and come towards me. This both frightened me and somehow comforted me that she might get away from the dark entity. But just as she started to stand up, the figure put its hands on her shoulders and pushed her back down into the bench. She immediately went back to her catatonic slumping state, muttering something under her breath. Suddenly two joggers rounded the corner from the jogging trail, making me jump in my adrenaline-fueled state. As they passed, they must have noticed my pale, startled face because they said, Everything okay, buddy? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, I stammered. They must have thought I'd been startled or worried about the woman on the bench. <laughs> oh, don't worry about her. She's harmless, said one of them as they passed. Oh, okay, I said. I turned back to her, and the shadowy figure was gone. I walked in a daze to the parking lot. What the hell had just happened? On the ride home, I ran the scenario through my head a million times. Had it been a trick of the light? Did I hallucinate from lack of oxygen? I tried to rationalize every angle, but nothing my imagination could come up with could account for what I'd seen. Had this woman's madness been so all-encompassing that it was contagious? 
I mean, was I going mad? I don't know. When I got home, my wife could tell something was wrong. I told her about my encounter with the woman, but I left out the shadow figure part. Somehow in my mind, if I had acknowledged it, it was real. I said something about how upsetting it was to see someone so mentally ill. It was just sad and terrifying. I've never seen the woman again, although she occasionally shows up in my nightmares along with her shadowy counterpart. Wake up! Oh, babe! God. Wake oh, up! Fuck. Oh, oh, Jesus. Are you okay? <sighs> You're having <sighs> another nightmare. <sighs> Honey, I think it's time to see a doctor about this. Leave me alone. Babe, just let me... Just leave me alone. I hate you. <sighs>